America, Europe, Africa, Asia. From Stockholm to Tokyo, wherever you find socialist parties, there is but one color that unites them. Red is unquestionably the socialist color. But why? Although the red flag has been used throughout history by various cultures, usually symbolizing blood, danger, battle, defiance, or rebellion, the red flag's significance in left-wing politics starts with the French Revolution. The tricolor cockade, which was red, white, and blue, became a very popular symbol of the Republican movement. The anti-monarchist kind of republicanism, not the Donald Trump kind of republicanism. The colors were inspired by two main sources. The first is the Dutch tricolor, used to declare the independence of the Dutch Republic from the Kingdom of Spain. As such, it became the symbol of republicanism and anti-monarchist revolution. It's interesting to think that if history had gone slightly differently, the French might have kept the orange from the Dutch flag, and consequently the color of socialism might have ended up being orange, which means there are some horrifyingly unesthetic alternate universes out there. The second source is the flag of Paris, which was blue and red. Blue for St. Denis of Paris, whose main claim to fame is having his head cut off and still being able to hold a sermon somehow. And red for St. Martin of Tours, who didn't do anything nearly as metal, he just kind of gave a guy's cloak. The reason red started being associated with the French left wing instead of white or blue is firstly because white was a royal color that the monarchists used, and secondly because red would symbolize the blood of the martyrs of the French Revolution. So the Jacobinists, the radical republican faction of the French Revolution, started using the plain red flag as an unofficial symbol of the new France, which lasted right up until Napoleon declared himself emperor. 27 years after Napoleon became emperor, there was a protest in Wales. Between 7 and 10,000 workers in Wales protested against low wages and unemployment, and the symbol they chose to represent their struggle was some cloth dunked in sheep's blood. I'm going to be honest with you, I can't find any source talking about why they decided to do that. So if you have any clue, feel free to leave a comment. But it probably symbolized the workers, uh, something or other. Or maybe it symbolized sheep, I don't know. But the flag became a symbol of local labor activist Dick Penderin, who was executed for participating in the revolt, and subsequently became a marcher for the working class. Returning to France 40 years later, they've gone through some stuff. First they had a king, then a republic, then an empire, then a monarchy again, then a republic again, then an empire again, but this time it's another guy different from the first guy, it's a whole thing. Right now it's 1871, which means France is back to being a republic. <laughs> Having thrown off the yoke of monarchy for at least the fourth time at this point, but who's keeping track? The Paris Commune, however, isn't content with just being a republic at this point. They want to be a socialist republic, and they have the red flag to prove it. Unfortunately, they didn't have the big army to do it, and the French armed forces massacred them. They became marchers for the socialist movement. Karl Marx held a speech and wrote a book about them, and their story went absolutely viral. I'm talking 100 million views in the first week. Viral. 20 years later, on the fair shores of Britannia, a new political party is being formed. It's called the Labour Party. And guess which their favourite colour is? That's right, it's blue. Just kidding, it's red. 17 years later, it's October Revolution time. The place is Russia, and the theme is communism. This is probably the most important event for the history of the red flag and the history of socialism in general, I guess. The October Revolution is sometimes relegated to something of a footnote in history, something which is very important in Russia but didn't really affect the rest of the world. But I really cannot overstate how massive the October Revolution was. As Jack Reed put it in his book, Ten Days That Shook the World, no matter what one thinks of Bolshevism, it is undeniable that the Russian Revolution is one of the great events of human history and the rise of the Bolsheviki a phenomenon of worldwide importance. The October Revolution kicked the worldwide labor movement into high gear, inspired too many revolutions to list, forced conservative governments around the world to give innumerable concessions to the working class, women's suffrage, working class suffrage, the eight-hour workday, the weekend, vacation, sick leave, labor rights in general were being handed out like candy so that the whining proletariat wouldn't throw a tantrum and install communism. Go on Wikipedia right now and look up list of socialist states. Most of those were, if not directly, then at least indirectly inspired by the Bolshevik Revolution. So what flag do they use to represent them? Thank you for watching this video, I hope you learned something. Leave me a comment, tell me what you think, like the video if it was good, share it if you want, subscribe maybe, follow me on Twitter, I don't know, I'm not your dad. But it is my birthday, and that's actually not a joke. So now you have to subscribe.
or you'll go to hell. If you want me to make more videos, you can bribe me to do it by becoming a patron over on patreon.com slash ashyourscapegoat. Now follows a list of people who have given me money. Thank you to Joshua Cheesman, Dunk Junk Funk, Orsi Sabo Kitty, Alel Dev, Jonah R. Brandley, M. Lim, Will M., Laura Stamp, Kuro Fox, Alfie Bridge Smith, Geckobite, Emil Sigerbeck, Kvagram, John H. N., and Jedi Davian. Also, thank you to my new patrons who have subscribed since I recorded this video, like two months ago Sebastian Brandt, Cut Play, Crinchy, Khan, Comrade Liebknecht, Anders Henriksen, and Trotsky is Dummy Thick. Thank you very much for your support. Trotsky is Dummy Thick.